as a painter, as someone who connects to people, that's my go-to, is observe. But it's almost like a, a way to sit back and watch and just not be the one in the middle getting the fire, sitting back, collecting and waiting. All right, we're back. Next episode from Freedom Culture Podcast. My name is Julian Guderla. I'm here at Envision Festival 2019. And I'm sitting here with my buddy Amir Magal, visionary artist. Well, what up? Welcome, Amir. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. I want to hear a lot more about the visionary art you do because I know there are so many different modalities and ways that you are an artist. Just jump right in, man. All right. Well, thank you for having me. I'm in the jungle right now looking at all these tents and speakers and... It's been almost five years since I've been back to Costa Rica at Envision, where my, my first love was connecting with children at these festivals. And we started a whole movement where we had festivals within festivals with children. Cool. And that was unbelievable. So this is the first time actually coming back to a festival where I'm not surrounded by kids and tribal marking everybody like that. Um, so it's a, new, it's a new thing for me to get back into the festival nice. in my early 40s now. And in your early 40s? early 40s, shout out to you, first yeah, of all. This guy looks like he could be in his early 20s. Feel it. Beauty. Feel it. Um, and, uh, I mean, if we want to go back a little bit to, to connect in with why, the why I do what I do, mm -hmm. uh, it's a question a lot of people have been asking me. Yeah. We just finished a mastermind in the Caribbean, and mm -hmm. I got to connect one-on-one -on -one with many people, and I kind of st stayed out of the, the pit where there's a lot of people talking and, mm -hmm. and uh, so I like to, to connect one-on-one -on -one with people and that's been my, my thing. Uh, I think it all started when I realized that part of me uh, as an artist really connects with looking into people and finding what their superpower is or what their, what their talent is or where they can, where, where, I, where I see them as just fruiting and just being their best. And Photography was my way of seeing people and, and, and sharing their beauty to the world. So I was able to, to connect in with, you know, the legends of our time in the, in the conscious world and shoot them for years uh, uh, and travel the world and go to the conferences and, and retreats and see the world through my art, through people. Jump forward, let's say, three, four, five years, I get to Burning Man and find that another gift can happen without the camera in there is just looking at people, touching people, connecting, connecting with people and uh, using paint, bringing back an ancient tradition of body paint uh, or ceremonial connection. And that's where tribal markers kind of bloomed and blossomed. Yeah. It was a gift. It was an art form that I just gave away from just, years. Just a really short addition to that. This is the gift you're actually giving to our community of the hundred mastermind attendees and, and uh, Punta Mona Freedom Culture tribe is you sat down with each and every one of us five minutes, 15 minutes, half hour touch and painting on their body which I've enjoyed before but and we yet have to fully drop in you you'd started a little bit last night right but it's such an interesting way as you're saying it's like you're mixing art body kind of healing because just gentle real touch is like something I, I believe humans really need you know and at the same time you have this one-on-one -on -one window where you're able to connect with someone with for me too the, doing podcast interviews just if I never said it before the biggest reason I do those is because I get to know the people I can I can listen to yeah so you get it it's the tool this yeah. is a tool for connection um, you know and another thing was the photography was a beautiful tool but what happened was I had a piece of technology in between the person and then a computer for pre or post production mm -hmm. and then I knew them I felt like more than they knew me there was no real interchange of, of giving and receiving yeah um, so once I put down the camera a bit and started painting on people and looking at them and touching them it became much more of an intimate connection much more of a, a moment with someone with the, taking a breath and all this all this um, what people have been asking for and, and, and craving, I think, in this modern day of, of stress and technology is just to take a breath with someone, look at them in the eye and hold them and know that someone's got you for that moment. And that's the service I guess I provide and, and actually train now people. Every month I have teams of people learning the art of tribal marking in Venice Beach, California. Tribal marking? Yep. That's the, 
the art of tribal marking. Yeah, you know, it's the art of connection. It's the, yeah. the tribal arts, but you know, bringing together the the source of what we're what we've done for generations and generations back to modern time in, in crazy environments like this one. Mm. Just sitting down, connecting. With it gets me really curious. I want to know what is your well, your vision, but more so, like. You know, when you connect with people on one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one like that and, and you, you, there is like like healthy, central touch, eye contact, mm -hmm. listening, painting on them. So there's certainly like a reciprocal mutuality-based mutuality exchange. What's your vision with that? Like, what do you want that to spread into if you're, if you're actually like sharing it with people in Venice, Venice Beach at the, at the moment? Yeah, actually, it's uh, way beyond Venice Beach at the moment. Yeah. Um, We have teams all over the country and now in the world where people are not just purchasing markers, but um, kind of jumping into a, a culture of connection. And, you know, the vision for the future, it's really up to each person how they make their mark in the world. Mm. You know, that's a big thing we say, what's your mark? What are you, what are you doing in this world? And imagine your mark in the world is making marks, <laughs> you know, and it's kind of a play on words, but, uh, you know, how can you paint it forward? How can you be in service to your tribe? And to me, it's that little starfish, you know, yeah. principles, like you, you help one and then they, 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 they help many, many just by that one. Um, so that's kind of where it's at right now. It's, Beautiful. it's this one-on-one -on -one connection tool that paints it forward, that lets other people make their marks in the world. Amir, I want to ask another question. What does freedom culture mean to you? The word or this, this brand? <laughs> I'm more interested in the word. I'm more okay. interested in the feeling in your chest. I'm more interested in the way you connect. Making tribal markings in that sense, sure. right? Like connecting with people is, is, is your business, but your passion, your, your, your legacy that you're starting in, in some ways, right? So, so what does freedom culture really bring up for you? So the word culture has cult in it. <laughs> Let's go there. Um, yeah. And cult to me is anything that we're doing to bring to get people together mm -hmm. so a free cult you know uh, it sounds crazy but it's just like brainwashing you know you're washing a brain of something maybe that doesn't serve them and opening them back up to and f filling it with doses of reality maybe or, or doses of presence so to me it's saying a culture based on a free th free spirit or free thinking um, free dome the head you know it's the the free thoughts it sounds like it would be um, and What it feels like, what's being bloomed here, what's being, what's being created is a forum and locations for people who strive to feel like they're part of a culture of freedom. A forum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like a, I like that. A I, I really like that. I think that's a really fantastic choice of wording. Thank you. Yeah. Let me switch it up a little bit and, and kind of go like I want I, I like digging deeper. Bring it, you know, bring um, it. I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. You can say yes, no, either, both, or, or just name the one. You know? Only on Tuesdays. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea which day of the week it is. Me neither. Jungle time for me. <laughs> Let's start there. What do you prefer, jungle or desert? Jungle and desert. No, I'm both. <laughs> I'm a nomad. I can do both. Got it. Coffee or tea? Tea. Meditation or dance? Meditation is dance. Dance, dance <laughs> yeah. is meditation. Alcohol or cannabis? Definitely cannabis. Sleeping in a tent or a cabin? Well, I'm in a tent now. Uh, a cabin. A cabin. Yeah. yeah. Amir, you were speaking about your memory with children at festivals and how uniting the children at playful places like this. It's like I, can, I can tell. It's like in your heart still. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, what do you believe is, is the future of education going to be like? I can only say what I would love my children to, uh, Even better. to experience. I see them barefoot. I see them with uncles and aunties everywhere, representing all different aspects of life. I see learning as an experience. I see trees and plants as part of that experience. I see art and rhythm and, and culture as their day-to-day -day food, as their drink. 
and I see the elders and the and the teachers and the the medicine workers as the most valuable instruments. And for me personally, the the education only begins with with children. Yeah. Where does it go when it begins with children? It allows us overthinking adults to to play and to learn again through through new eyes. <laughs> yeah. This is in my this is in my being. This is in my chest every day. It's like how do I drop this seriousness that my head which is trying to <laughs> you know, enroll me into every day. Every day, and there's a new loop where my head is trying to tell me how serious shit is. Right. And while I'm really happy to be informed and definitely don't like to be ignorant about the world's happenings, what I really desire and crave is playful connection in what feels healthy and somewhat safe to me. Mm -hmm. One of my teachers, his name is Philip Moore, Amazing human being. He's in his 70s now. He's part of a, the education revolution in the last four, four to five decades. He says, there is no teacher that is not also a learner. And there is no learner that is not also a teacher. Following that kind of logic, like how does that flip our sage on the stage teaching system? Explain. Well, so... I mean, stages are fucking epic. It's great to have knowledge, knowledge exchange. But in the education system I grew up in, and I know that most, most kids and adults are still kind of looking or, or, or in, you have one centralized figure mm -hmm. who is supposed to have all the knowledge. And I just don't think that that really represents the reality or the, the reality I'd like my children uh, who, who, are yet, who are yet to come, but like, you know, or myself to live in. Totally. I mean, the one who talks loudest is not the one who's supposed to be hurt, you know? Um, I think that's the way I, I teach, if you want to call it teaching. It's the way I, I, I hope to live is be as quiet as possible and listen as much as possible so that when I do speak, it's actually heard. Beauty. I want to I wanna ask you about your process of learning to listen and maybe start with like where meditation or yoga or qigong or whatever it is found you. But I really want I really want to understand because you're you're observing you for four or five days now. You're a skilled listener and and, and like you're practicing this first principle of permaculture, observation. So I, I want to drop in there with you. I mean as a photographer, as a as a painter, as someone who connects to people, that's my go to is observe. But it's almost like a a way to sit back and watch and just not be the one in the middle getting the fire, sitting back, collecting and waiting for my time to, to take the wave, let's say, if it's, we're talking about oceans or... Because we don't really have the greatest... It's really hard for somebody like Where I'm at now is um, listening and tuning into people actually came from a couple arts mm -hmm. that I fell in love with actually in college. Um, if you've heard of, obviously, yoga, but then there's capoeira. Yay. Capoeira has been a passion of mine for over 15 years. I had no idea. Yeah. And uh, I'm actually pretty good at it. Uh, I don't show it off. I don't play unless I know people can jump in with me. Um, but I love teaching. I want to play Capoeira with this guy now so bad. Come to the beach. Let's go. Let's, let's go do this, yeah. please. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm an amateur. But mm -hmm. Capoeira is like, oh my God, what a beautiful martial arts, song, yeah. dance. And to me, it just like the marker is a tool for connection. Uh, capoeira is a tool for life in a way of... When you, you know, you've heard the word like Bruce Lee, like you don't know someone until you fought them. With capoeira, it's very similar where you don't know someone when you, until you play with them. Because there's no, there's no fight in capoeira. It's, it's, let's play capoeira. It was yoga capoeira. I play capoeira. Você fala português, eh? Um pouquinho, sim. And, uh, and when, I, when I played capoeira for years, I got the mix of everything I love. From rhythm, to community, to dance, to eye connection, to martial arts, to flexibility, to strength. All these things that... You can't find in one, and you can take it to a club after, <laughs> and then play with a whole bunch of people and jump in the middle, and you're like the queen king of the place and having a great. So I enjoyed that, um, and then I started, you know, diving back into myself and, and supporting other other people a lot, and and I see that I'm still using that same 
those same techniques I, I did in capoeira, yeah. where I can see people, I can connect with them, I can be playful, and then also let myself or them shine in that moment. There's a scape, there's a, there's a give and there's a take. Um, so that's, I think, the basis of a lot of my expression nowadays, it comes from that art. Really cool. I like capoeira a lot myself, and it's the flow element of it, mm. the like reciprocal change between listening, observing, and then giving and pushing or yeah, yeah. jumping or dancing. And yeah, wow, man, I'm 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 so stoked we get to we get to hang out here and 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 speak about the world we desire, we dream of. And also acknowledge the world we're in right now. Envision, I want to do another shout out to Envision Festival. What a powerful convergence. Bring 6,000 people into the jungle based on a, quotation marks, building man culture. A lot of the structures that are built here in a holistic way with the materials from the land stay here on site after all the people leave are available to the local community. Um, yeah, I, I run a podcast called Green Planet, Blue Planet. I don't think I've told you that before. And I'm on a quest myself. I ask people, but since about two years, I asked almost 100 people now, um, recorded and ask people all the time on, on offline, what is the earth you're really desiring? And let me give a little bit more context. You know, we have the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. In Davos, people just like, framed it the world's to-do list. But you know, I want to take it one step further. What is the shared holistic vision we have for our planet Earth, our Mother Gaia, our Pachamama? And in order to find that out, I'm asking people, like, what is the feeling place for the future that you're sharing with your fellow human beings? So I'm here, I want to ask you right now, if you were to go 50, 100, 200 years into the future, you already kind of did that about education. What do you, what do you see? What do you feel? What's your heart? What does your heart know is possible? that's already a more beautiful world that becomes possible through collaboration. Mm. You know, it's funny because you assume that being human, that's my biggest um, quest is for that human race maybe to survive <laughs> and to live a beautiful life on this planet. Um, I take a different, different view on it. Um, this is me in this body now. In 200 years, I hope my spirit's free enough to not not give a shit <laughs> more care about the all being in the all and this this beautiful planet that we live in in this moment this body that i got to have this time around is is a blessing yeah and it's also another lesson so in, i don't know and i don't care to know in 200 years what's going to happen but i also feel that what i can do is only now and what yeah. i can do is show up the way i show up and uh, and play as much as possible, uh, eat good food and, and be around beautiful people. So I wish the best for the humans in the future. And uh, I wish you all, you know, get to have clean air and clean water. Mm. And, you know, hopefully the children, you know, don't, don't get too caught up in the VR world or whatever's coming next that, <laughs> that you know, gets the computer chips implanted. And, but maybe it becomes something that helps them evolve. And, yeah. And I'm, I'm very curious about the technology and, and the mix between the balance and nature and technology and how Boom. we can use them, you know? So That's why I asked the question. For right, sure. right, right yeah. there. I feel like just hearing that resonance in you, yeah, it's, it's really clear to me because it's so connected also in his words to the now. Because all I have is this moment with you here in this body, feeling, breathing. I have no idea what's even going to happen in the next three minutes. Right? That's why when people say, hey, let's go to this stage and that stage, I'm like, I don't even know where I'm going now. I'm just going to walk. You guys do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. And that's mm -hmm. the best way for me. Really cool. Amir, I want to ask you a last question. I want you to, to just share with people where they can find you, where they can find your work. Um, maybe a website, maybe a physical place, maybe just more how they, you know, however, however you want to share that. Um, just mm -hmm. throw it out there. <laughs> Tap your heels three times. I <laughs> think uh, the best way is, depends, if you're interested in getting more knowledge about actual tribal markers and the, the, the community and the movement that's forming worldwide, it's tribalmarkers.com. But even better is the Instagram, just tribalmarkers. And we have a following of people who 
who help support the vision by, you know, one, purchasing markers and learning how to use them so that when you have the tool, people really feel confident in your hands and you can take it to the next level. Um, the photography aspect is, uh, is more of, my art is evolving into bridging the two, going and traveling to tribes around the world and seeing what makes them, you know, unite together. Mm. She came back from Ethiopia, actually, and Ethiopia. got to connecting with a beautiful tribe there, lived with them for a bit, and got to s see firsthand now that people are living this way still, in a way where, you know, they have literally three or four possessions, mm -hmm. and they barter for food, they barter for everything, and they're healthy, they're beautiful, they're yeah. stunning. They have this way of being that's just so confident and connected to their purpose. Yeah. Uh, the women have a place, the elders have a place, the children have a place, and everything kind of fits in their culture. And, and to be honest, their freedom culture, their, their culture has so much more um, a, a sense of being, a sense of fulfillment. Mm. Um, that I think when we're craving so much of, mm -hmm. and to me it was it was helpful to just sink in to that. Thankfully, they're still around the, the tribes and the way of the here, way, here. You know, and Amir, thank you so much for for dropping in for this short and quick episode of some wisdom, some insights, some stories, and we got to laugh a little bit. I like that. Thanks, brother. So good. <laughs>